most venerable members of the Mahasangha, um, venerable Kogole uh, Sumana Nayakateo, the abbot of uh, Ratana International Buddhist Center, and all the other resident monks of this temple, and uh, dear friends. <coughs> Today, uh, the topic um, is psychosomatic diseases um, and the power of Buddhist meditation. I would like to invite you to uh, meditate for a while, uh, just to begin with, and feel the energy first. And later we can uh, listen to the Dharma talk. Please sit comfortably, <coughs> straighten your back. <coughs> Make sure you don't sleep. Okay. Be active when you close your eyes and focus on uh, this beautiful short uh, guided meditation. Take a good deep breath. Good long breath. And then slowly release. And relax. One more time. Take a good long breath. And hold it. Don't just release right away. Just hold it for a while. And then slowly release, and release, and relax. Now breathe mindfully. Focus on your breathing. <coughs> and relax. Let any thought come and go. When you close your eyes, you can also listen to many things. Just observe them, identify them and then let it go without any judgment just listen and then let it go if any thought comes to you just observe it no judgment completely relax and relax and relax Just focus. May, may I be free from enmity and danger. May I be free from mental suffering. May I be free from physical suffering. May I take care of myself happily. May my parents, spouse, children, and other family members, teachers, relatives, and friends be free from enmity and danger, be free from mental suffering, be free from physical suffering. May they take care of themselves happily. May all participants of this Dharma talk 
be free from enmity and danger. Be free from mental suffering. Be free from physical suffering. May they take care of themselves happily. May the abbot of this temple, the founder of this temple, all the supporters, friends and well-wishers of this temple, Sri Ratana International Buddhist Center, Anaheim, May they all be free from enmity and danger. May they be free from mental suffering. May they be free from physical suffering. May they take care of themselves happily. May our guardian deities in this compound, be free from mental suffering, be free from physical suffering. May they take care of themselves happily. May all beings, all breathing things, all creatures, all individuals, all personalities, may all females, all males, all the saints, all those yet to attain sainthood, all deities, all humans, all those in the woeful plains be free from enmity and dangers. <clears throat> be free from mental suffering. Be free from physical suffering. May they take care of themselves happily. May all beings in the eastern direction, in the western direction, in the northern direction, in the southern direction, in the southeastern direction, in the northwestern direction, in the northeastern direction, in the southwestern direction, in the direction below, in the direction above, be free from enmity and dangers. Be free from mental suffering. Be free from physical suffering. May they take care of themselves happily. May all beings, all breathing things, all creatures, all females, all males, all saints, all those yet to attain sainthood, all deities, all humans, all those in the woeful plains, be free from enmity and dangers. Be free from mental suffering. Be free from physical suffering. May they take care of themselves happily. May I be well and happy and healthy. May all sentient beings be well and happy 
inhale deep. May all sentient beings be well and happy and healthy. May all sentient beings be well and happy and healthy. Please enjoy these blissful moments in noble silence few seconds. Take a long breath and hold it for a few seconds and then slowly release, very slowly release. One more time. Take a good long breath, good long breath and hold it for a few seconds and then slowly release and release and release okay with close eyes again we will uh, rub our palms Let's rub our palms and when it is warm enough, you can place on your eyes and give it a massage, switch your massage. And slowly open your eyes, <coughs> stretch a little bit. How do you feel now? Very good. <laughs> what is it? Feel heavenly. <laughs> okay. So, um, what we do actually, um, we um, talk about mental health, right? <laughs> um, so, for the mental health, I think um, this meditation. Uh, is widely accepted as the best remedy. Um, <clears throat> so today, actually, we, we are going to talk about this um, uh, psychosomatic uh, diseases uh, and also the power of Buddhist meditation. We just had the feeling of that um, beautiful uh, experience. And remember, each and every one of you must have felt it differently. I know some of you must have been sleeping <laughs> because you were tired or maybe hungry, <laughs> uh, whatever. And also, if this is the end of the day, maybe you're working or you know driving so far, and it can happen. <clears throat> and some of you are still feeling very good, and um, and every individual differently they meditate, right? So maybe some of you could meditate the entire time without any disturbance, or you could feel that energy differently. And some of you, maybe your mind was wandering, uh, so maybe you couldn't focus on properly due to some reason. Maybe you had uh, some pain, many things. So what we do in life, we try to find happiness, right? We try to find happiness. Everyone try to find happiness in different ways. <clears throat> so what is somatic disease? Anyone know somatic disease? Somatic disease actually is something to do with the physical disease. You know, we have many diseases relating to the body, especially physical diseases, illnesses, 
uh, pains, all that stuff. So, uh, it's, that is called somatic. But what is uh, psychotic diseases? Yeah, <laughs> that is something related to mind, right? They are very mental disorders. Um, there can be many mental disorders, very acute uh, cases too. And um, so psychotic uh, diseases and psychiatric uh, illnesses, they are all related to each other. Um, all of us, you know, <laughs> in some form or the other, we are, we are suffering from different ways. Uh, that is why the Buddha said, the sabbe putujjana ummataka. All this, all these mundane worldly people are kind of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we all have, you know, in different levels. So it's very hard to maintain that inner strength, inner spirit, uh, inner peacefulness all the time, right? How many of you think you can, um, we, you can live a life of one whole week without getting angry? Do you think so? No. Without uh, having any jealous, jealousy feeling, <laughs> or without having any kind of defilements, very hard, right? <laughs> very hard because when we see things, we react to. We have eyes, we also we open the eyes, we see something. Let's say we come to the temple, we see the Buddha statue, we don't get angry. <laughs> but sometime maybe even in the temple, when you see some people. <laughs> you might uh, change the mood. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm sure when you see Sumanahandro, you will feel very happy. <laughs> Sumanahandro is a very pleasant person. So um, There are some people among you, I can see some of your faces, very bright, you know, very shiny, very peaceful faces. Some of you look tired. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we react to certain uh, things when we see. This is where we make mistakes. When we try to react to those things, then we actually create karma, right? We see something and I'm, whether it is pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, depending on that, we react to that and then there is a chance that you make, uh, create some kind of bad karma. The suffering too. If you see something unpleasant, you suffer. How about when you open your, uh, when you hear something, the same thing, right? It can be either pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. So if it is unpleasant, you suffer. you judge. This is the problem, you judge. You see something, you judge. You s hear something, you judge. And then even in meditation, let's say something. Some people may hear many things, right? You, did you hear something? Did you hear something while meditating? You hear, right? Maybe a small baby was crying. Or <laughs> you hear something, you know, a machine working. And so maybe you try to judge or try to react to those things. Oh, what is this noise? This is, uh, this is irritating, you know, something. If you say, if you think, then you react uh, to that um, negatively. But if you just let it go, it's okay, just a nice. If you don't judge, just let it go, then you will not actually feel uh, any difficulty or you will not disturb your inner peace. This is very important. Every time we try to react to certain things uh, in a negative way, we trouble ourselves. We disturb our beautiful inner peace that all of us have. So the more you contact with different, uh, whether it is through eyes, through ear, through nose, through tongue, through skin, even through mind, we react uh, in the negative manner, you actually create bad karma. That's where we have to be really careful. So psychiatric diseases especially can happen to many of us and psychiatric diseases, illnesses can
can um, lead us to many kinds of physical uh, diseases too. So they are called psychosomatic diseases. There are some, like let's say you have something, you worry about your job or your salary or a family life or your studies or keep worrying. What happens? <laughs> you keep worrying. The more you keep worrying, there are more chances for you to uh, aggravate certain physical illnesses within you. Maybe suddenly back pain. It's never heals. You get back pain. Sometimes tummy or some maybe body immune system works very low when you have that mental problem you get um, your immune system becomes low right and then um, your sugar level can go up heart rate can go up cholesterol all these things can aggravate and you will feel um, suddenly you go to a doctor and doctor, doctor will scan you and they take the report or oh, your sugar is not good <laughs> Um, your blood pressure is not good and all these things people say but this is not really totally physical this is also due to some uh, chronic or lasting uh, unhappiness within you some kind of depression within you some kind of aggression within you so these things can happen so they lead to your weak point. So every time you get angry, if you have backache, do your backache will improve. If you have blood sugar problem, the sugar level will increase. Right? Every time you feel sensitive or to something, and then that weak point will be attacked. So the physical and mental, these are both um, helping each other. They are both helping each other. They are like Nama Rupa. <laughs> Nama Rupa, how, how they help each other. Nama is like a, like a blind person. Rupa is like a crippled person. So Nama needs the help of the Rupa. Uh, blind person and crippled person, if they get together, they can walk. <laughs> right? The blind person will take the crippled person on his shoulder and they can, <laughs> they can walk. So, so we, um, we help each other actually. So today we, we need to learn. I try to um, uh, discuss with you something. If we can figure out certain things that we have in our system, in our, we have to recognize ourselves first, very important that we recognize these things. You have to be humble. You have to be really frank, honest, sincere. You have to um, observe that scan, investigate within yourself, oh, this is my problem. And there are more chances for you to come out of it. And sometimes uh, because of our own ego or because of our, of our different situations, we don't share with others, with others right? Let's say you are a big boss and you don't want to share your sufferings with others because you don't have somebody in that level. But because of our own uh, ego, we don't want to share it. And then we suffer and suffer and sometimes these things can lead to our uh, physical suffering and both mental suffering. <clears throat> so things like schizophrenia, you know schizophrenia? Mm -hmm. It's a very serious uh, mental, mental disorder, disorder, right? Yeah, you might even see things that the others can see. You hear things. You hear things that the others don't hear. So they act like very weirdly. The other people will think like, oh, what's happening with him? Sometimes when you really improve meditation, <laughs> You also will see, others cannot see these things, but that's a different situation. You can hear things that the others can see, uh, can hear, right? That's a different situation, that's not schizophrenia. 
but yes that's a mental disorder very serious mental disorder we don't know how things happen there can be a traumatic uh, incidents experiences in our life but suddenly you know we might change our lifestyle uh, because of that um some people when they watch certain movies or when you watch certain uh, when you play some games you know very violent or whatever games that you watch maybe uh, <laughs> or youtube uh, when you watch maybe you you can get that um, sudden uh, traumatic attack and some people like to watch horror movies right how many of you watch horror movies no <laughs> mostly men mostly men you sure <laughs> okay how about our young children do you wa- watch horror movies no okay you you say in front of the buddha right <laughs> and um, do you play games Why you pointing at others? <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot of a um, lot of things that uh, our mental peace can be disturbed. Even even in the temple we have the lighter. It's like a gun. I sometimes um, think what is that psychology, you know? Um even in the the temple we we have uh, a lighter it looks like a gun <laughs> why do they produce things like that like ah, it looks like a gun you know the people's mentality the they use the psychology the game for example those people who produce games they are very good psychologists they know exactly how to incite those young kids so they become that becomes an addiction once you get out of that and uh, get into that addiction it's very hard to come out of it yeah there are some people who who keep doing all these things anything can be an addiction some time back it was television television became an addiction but nowadays nobody watch television like that now we have cell phone everything in that small phone you know <laughs> yeah that's very uh scary sometimes so these things uh some of those um sense those objects that uh, can harm us in a very um dangerous manner um so psychotherapy uh and some of those um um palliative care and uh, other Uh, spiritual care activities can help uh, people who suffer uh, from different uh, illnesses do you know about the buddhas any any um, story of the buddha that he acted as a wonderful physician psychotherapist to many people <coughs> angulimala what is kisa gotami hata chara yeah actually if we take these things into consideration they are very powerful case studies very powerful case studies and um, one sangulimala was an innocent boy right ahinsaka very smart guy um, like this young kids you know they, he was doing very well in the class he studies he was stopped all the time and some jealous students were there in the class so they were jealous of him doing good in the class so they tried to um break the heart of this the teacher and then uh, they slandered <coughs> about this uh, young innocent boy who was very smart and they keep telling the teacher about those negative things all the time sometimes one time two time you don't feel maybe but you keep telling that teacher's mentality also changed 
this attitude change to see maybe there is something in it he thought and then slowly slowly he started uh, his diverted uh, mentality um, his frustration and became an aggression and he started getting angry and anger led to hatred the teacher those days we don't pay school fee or something like that they uh, the teacher the student they all sit uh, stay in the teacher's house and after their education they go away but they have to pay something for the teacher the teacher said you have to bring me a, a necklace of fingers this young innocent guy who has never thought of such a thing you know he was so shocked he immediately got depression it was a kind of uh, schizophrenia for him he is really he was really traumatic he didn't know how to how to do that and that day uh, those days uh, you can't say no to the teachers they are very precious and they don't charge so you have to give whatever they ask you normally they don't ask like that but this was when it comes to revenge you become blind you don't know how to judge properly so you take the wrong decision you want to hurt that person but that became a very disastrous turn for this guy he ran to the jungle he didn't know he couldn't sleep for days and months he couldn't sleep sleep he he was thinking why it happened to me i was not doing anything wrong sometimes being so good also can earn many enemies right <laughs> yeah so he really suffered a lot and finally uh, when he was out of his mind in the jungle he saw somebody going that thought came to him he killed that person took the finger off and somehow once this sin committed it's easier for him to continue so he kept doing it he became out of his mind he became so violent so ahinsa ka became angoli wala and he kept on killing people as long as he could finally the last one just before that fortunately for him the buddha was there and remember we don't have that <laughs> somebody like that to come to rescue us so it's very uh, lucky for him he could see the buddha uh, but before that he saw his own mother he don't see even the mother he's blind he was uh, covered wild so what happened he he was actually trying to kill his own mother also he doesn't care if he could kill his mother what would have happened anguli mala would not become arahant right if he did that he would never uh, be able to become arahant in that lifetime no immediately he would go to you know because of that na uh, anantariya papa kamma uh, he would be in real trouble this is where the buddha has come to rescue people because he saw in the morning with his maha karuna samapatti that great compassion in meditation he saw this guy although he was such um, a nasty fellow na fellow now if he could be helped immediately there are more chances for him to come out of it and he can become arha so buddha timely intervene this is also one of those great qualities of the buddha his leadership his um, um amazing capacity to uh, go rescue people when they are in trouble so buddha went in between he appeared in between angulimala and uh, his mother and he rescued the buddha um, angulimala and he became an arha so luckily for him all those karma bad karma uh, you know turned out to be a hosi karma 
most of them because only during his lifetime he had to pay he could not meditate too because although he became a uh, monk he still had to meditate right <laughs> he could not meditate too because day and night he had the shocking experience so the restlessness and then the buddha helped him too with that and then he could let it go and became finally he could decode this circuit of transmigration the sansaric whirlpool that we are all entrenched in. he could come out of it so that is one story kisa gautami story everyone knows right everyone knows about um, how this uh, young mother who lost her only child and uh, did not want to believe did not want to accept that he was dead he didn't she didn't want to accept that he was uh, dead and then he um, she said my my um, baby is not dead he's only sick and then um, nobody could uh, help her and luckily there was buddha again so she was directed to the tetavana monastery where the buddha was teaching the dhamma and she went there the buddha asked um about um uh, he was very compassionate and um he also knows when they come um he can help and buddha didn't say he is dead did he say he is dead no right <laughs> he used those um very skillful means that is why he is one of the one of the amazing teachers he has got that very skillful means and skillful ways to uh, help people show their path to liberation <coughs> so when uh, kisa gotami said that my uh, my my um, son is dead the buddha said uh, not dead buddha said uh, she asked can you uh, give some medicine uh, for my son the buddha said yes i can give some medicine uh, if you can bring some um, mustard yeah handful of mustard seed please bring some handful of mustard seed i will give a good medicine she she was very happy then the buddha said uh, but that should be from a house where nobody has passed away right so she went knocked at one door and then she said um, can you bring me some mustard seed for my son he is sick we need some medicine uh, the the house owner very happily brought some medi- uh, mustard seed but then she learned that somebody passed away from that house then she said no thank you and he went to she went to another house from that house to another house from one house to the other one door to the other kept knocking you know all the time expecting something somewhere she would find that mustard seed from a house where nobody has passed away could she find no she could not find so what happened she was holding the baby all the time and the time goes on she was walking you know she was getting herself tired and she also started opening her senses which were all um shielded before she couldn't sense anything she couldn't see it properly she couldn't hear things properly now she started opening up that was the exercise the buddha gave that was the um therapeutic um, uh remedy that the buddha prescribed for her and she felt she started smelling and she finally re- recovered she recognized she realized oh not only my son that dies everyone in the world dies every household has somebody who passed away grandmother grandfather mother father brother sister uncle aunt somebody passed away so this is a very natural thing a common law i can't be an exception she finally realized it accepted it the moment you accept there is a chance for you to recover if you reject 
if you refuse to accept your fault, there are no chances. You actually shut your doors. So that's how Krishna Gautami finally decided to dump the body, came back to the Buddha and listened to his Dhamma, became a bhikkhuni, became an arahant. She was liberated. Patachara's case also was like that. What about King Ashoka? Who was King Ashoka? One of the greatest kings that we talk about today, right? If you talk about the history of Buddhism, we can't talk about uh, Buddhism, Buddhist history without King Ashoka, one of the greatest kings in the world. But how was he at the beginning? Very violent. He was called Chanda Ashoka, violent Ashoka. He could expand his um, territory. For that, he would do anything. He killed his many brothers. He, he killed many of his relatives who were in line to the crown, uh, you know, crown. And then um, also many other territories were overtaken, invaded. Finally, the, the battle that he had in uh, uh, Kalinga war, that was a very disastrous um, war. War does not bring any happiness to right many. It brings all the time pain, agony, suffering, torturing, and very traumatic experiences. And King Asoka saw how people were suffering, how they were crying, the wives were wailing, and they were weeping and uh, lamenting all the time. People uh, showed, showed Soldiers who lost their life and soldiers who lost their limbs and people who lost their properties, they were all crying and suffering. And this agonizing experience, these uh, loud noises, he could hear all the time. And King Asoka could not sleep. He could not sleep. He could not eat. He couldn't focus. He was very suffering so much. And finally, he decided to ask his ministers, can you show me some way where I can find some peace? So these ministers who were related to different religions, they took him to many, many religious practices. Maybe we were tired. So they, he went everywhere. He couldn't find any peace. He was so upset, insomnia. He cannot eat. So many problems that he had. Depression to the, the core. <coughs> and finally he saw one day when he was uh, looking outside, a very young, small monk, um, seven year old, walking very peacefully. Such a serene walk. Such a peaceful person. A boy, a small child of that age, walking such with such inner strength, inner peace, he was really surprised. Ashoka was really surprised. And he immediately find there is something in this guy, in this young child, he invited. And that was the turning point of his entire life, not only of his, but also the entire Buddhist history. He changed. The whole course of Buddhist um, um, history. He started repenting and he was trying to repay the damage that he did to the common public. He started building uh, many um, social welfare um, centers. He did many activities to help people. Uh, and then he was also taking care of those, uh, all the religious harmony and uh, he used the Buddhist teachings, yes. But he was also main, make, making sure that um, there is peace and harmony, happiness, prosperity in the country. So one person, like a, like a leader, if that person goes wrong, there can be many disasters. A leader in particular, 
fortunately this became a good person so that war became a blessing in disguise to him and then he changed his life he changed and then he sent missionaries to nine countries you know he even sent missionaries to suvarnabhumi myanmar and then he sent missionaries to aparantaka desa or what is called middle east even to the arabian world he sent missionaries buddhist missionaries and then he sent his own son and own daughter to one small country which um, compared to india um, compared to sri lanka india was 60 times bigger than that he sent his both son and daughter that's really amazing and how sri lanka turned out to be the theravada headquarters later and how sri lanka produced so many wonderful great scholars and the buddhist literature that sri lanka produced been such a tiny country you know if we are somebody here they don't even know sri lanka but many people in american universities all the professors they talk about sri lanka if somebody talks about buddhist history you cannot delete sri lanka that is the kind of contribution that this small country uh, offered to the world buddhist world so from sri lanka buddhism went to thailand myanmar cambodia laos even some uh, bikunis a group of bikunis led by bikuni devasara went to mainland china established uh, Ther- uh, theravada bikuni order in china and from china the bikuni uh, buddhism went to south uh, korea and from korea to japan everywhere buddhist uh, mission spread it. so so see this all things happen just one person changing uh, his life that is uh, really amazing so we are uh, really lucky to talk about this uh, today so the power of meditation how can that be helpful to us uh, many ways like we we talk about we had a little bit of meditation practice right so the power of meditation um like uh, metta meditation uh how does that help us um help us uh, alleviate our suffering do you think we can um, we can uh, spread metta when we are uh, suffering no <laughs> when we are suffering like when you are sick can you send metta to others can you send metta to yourself even that is difficult for some right some people even commit suicide you know and um, there are cases um, where people <coughs> out of um, extreme pain they try to end their own life and um, many things happen but there are also some cases very strong cases now uh, even the cancer patients you know they can recover from uh, their uh, difficulties completely cure uh, because mostly these cancer patients uh, these things are happening the main, main root cause of some of these cases are um, are called uh, type uh, b there are two characteristics uh, two characters um, called type a and type uh, b behaviors so type a behavior people uh, mostly in western countries we have people are very quick very smart right they do things very fast and uh, they they want to do things faster they don't like other people to do things slower they get really animated are there people like that you can you can imagine yourself there is actually an online testing you can test yourself whether you belong to type a or type b especially in the western countries where the lifestyle is so fast we are all in the fast mode so these things can happen we have to do things really quickly 
So you can do like in our countries, very, <laughs> uh, very laid back, we can do that. Things are really fast. So here, what happened? The things like heart um, diseases, they are main causes uh, of this um, lifestyle. Yeah. And the people who have cancer, they, they found out they are mostly type B characters. <laughs> because, yeah, they, they kind of, um, 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 they are very um, uh, rational and they also don't show, the, show their emotions. And uh, what happens, you slowly um, don't share things or don't show your emotions and uh, those people, uh, they found most in most of the cancer patients. Silently so, suffering. Yes? Silently suffering. Silent, silent killers. <laughs> Right? So when we know these uh, characteristics, we have, to, um, we have to make sure that uh, we come out of this as soon as possible. And there are some, uh, some things that we can solve ourselves. So there are some people who don't share these things with the others, uh, but you have to take care of yourself. So some of the tips for your good health would be there are certain things that you can solve yourself, so you need to talk to someone. Someone actually whom you can trust, whom you can respect. There are chances that you can come out of that. And sometimes you don't share this thing, you will, as she said, silently kill yourself and lead to many psychosomatic diseases. That can be very dangerous. So. Self-care is very important, very, very important. And some of the countries like Japan, they have um, a palliative care um, institutes established in certain Japanese uh, hospitals. Um, <coughs> amazing, like Buddhist, um, uh, Pure Land Buddhism, they, uh, they have started some, um, some um, uh, palliative care units where Elderly people are well taken care of, and chronic uh, people who are suffering from um, life-threatening diseases, they are so much taken care of. I have been to some of the um, institutes in Japan. They are so caring uh, for their people. And now, Japan, also they are for us, uh, some of the leading countries where the life, uh, lifespan is more than anyone else. Like female uh, people, they live like 85 average. Males, 78 average. That's really quite, um, uh, compared to other countries, that's really very good because they, they take care of those people who are now, you know, about to die. They want to make sure that everyone and uh, everything in that family be well taken care of, very sincerely, they do it. Really amazing. So their situation, even before death and after death, they uh, take well care of the whole family. Even the, after the death, they take care of that family. The patient is given utmost priority, whatever they want they give, and they give um, utmost care so that he can live, or he or she can live as long as that person can. That's really amazing. Do you know about euthanasia? Yes. What is it? Kill yourself. <laughs> Ask them to kill you. Yeah, there are Ask some people them. like, you know, when they don't want to live anymore, <coughs> they want to terminate. Yeah. So, but um, some countries like, uh, we don't accept that. And even self-immolation um, is another problem, like uh, people kill themselves. Like some of those, remember Vietnam, in Vietnam War, some of those Vietnamese monks, they burn themselves. They burn themselves. Um, that is a protest uh, towards the, the, the war, in fact. But that's not really what we are supposed to do. 
even in the Buddha's time it happened actually. And one time Buddha gave a Dhamma talk uh, regarding the, the pessimistic side of life, the asubha, uh, you know, everything is impermanent, so life is uh, really miserable, suffering and all that stuff. And then um, after a while, Buddha found out some monks missing. <laughs> some monks were missing. And then he asked, what happened? Where are those monks? And he said, oh, the, those monks, they thought the life is miserable, so there's no point living. <laughs> so they, they committed suicide. And then Buddha had to, um, you know, um, uh, prescribe another law. Your life is very, very important, very precious. You should never, ever kill yourself. As long as you respect others' life, you should respect yourself too. There is no chance for you to end your life just like that. So even Buddha said, it's a parajika. One of the deadliest sins that an upasampada man can do. You cannot end your life like that. Like we have our eyes and we see things, so should we, uh, we, sh we, we have bad karma because of our eyes? Does that mean we should blind ourselves? No, right? <laughs> because we have all the five senses, so we do those uh, bad things or bad karma. Does that mean we should uh, shut them all? No. We, in Buddhism, we have to be acting responsibly. That's very important. You see things, it's okay. So just let it go, or you don't judge negatively, you act positively, live positively. That's how we should do. This is how we should uh, maintain our five senses. And if we uh, live according to this, and uh, also with uh, mindfulness and compassion all the time, can help us alleviate most of our uh, problems that we have. I invite you all to meditate sometime in your day. Sometime. Uh, how many of you meditate one hour a day? Anyone? Half an hour? Fifteen minutes? Five minutes? <laughs> okay. So can, do you think you can meditate five minutes? Everyone? Promise? <laughs> okay, I invite you, please do that. Even five minutes. Okay. Even five minutes, if you can meditate, that can bring a difference to your life. You see that. And also maybe you can record how you feel during that five minutes. During that five minutes, how you feel? You feel very happy. Sometimes you feel, even this five minutes, I couldn't focus. You know, I was suffering, I was, my mind was roaming. You can see, you can record them. Things like that, you keep doing it. Maybe um, one day you will be able to improve that meditation. You will be able to maintain that inner peace, inner happiness. This is what we need, uh, all of us, we need to have that beautiful inner peace and happiness. And thanks to this Buddha Dhamma, and if we practice this Dhamma, and uh, also maintain our uh, meditation, uh, metta, karuna, mudita, upekha, all these things, you know, uh, can make us better human beings. And then we can be happy and healthy. So Buddha's um, all these Buddhas have actually uh, taken us out of this uh, uh, Parama Roga, what we call Parama Roga, what is that? Um, so he has taken us to the Nibbana, shown us that light, shown us that beautiful, peaceful happiness in ourselves because of that only we can decode this sansaric existence. If we practice that, if we realize that, we can find out that everlasting peace and happiness, where there is no sickness, no old age, 
no death where there is full of peace happiness and bliss okay with that um, we conclude i i uh, hope you all um, the very best uh, peace and happiness with the power of all those uh, beautiful things that you have done uh, today and before uh, may the noble triple gem bless you help you protect you and guide you towards the right path may all the brahmas all the devas and all the good spiritual friends bless you help you protect you and guide you towards the right path make sure you are happy make sure you maintain your inner peace and inner strength make sure wherever you go you smile and make sure try to maintain um, not getting angry and uh, smile all the time and maintain that good health with you all the time so that we can live our life peacefully and happily and finally we all can get out of this sansaric misery and um, all of us be able to achieve that supreme bliss of absolute peace and happiness that is supreme enlightenment the nibbana sadhu sadhu sadhu